We're going to take this guitar inventory from our Tanstack site and integrate it via MCP into ChatGPT over here and use the new ChatGPT app functionality to give you interactive cards in place. It's going to be really exciting. And this video is brought to you by my friends over at Railway. We needed to host all this stuff. Railway is just the place to do it. Let's get right into it. All right, so as mentioned, we have this Tanstack application over here. You can go back to the homepage and see that this is indeed a Tanstack start application. This is pretty much based on our Tan Chat boilerplate that uses a set of guitars as a mechanism for showing how to do integrate e-commerce with an AI. Of course, we do that all in the context of this application, but what our customers might want to do is actually integrate that into an MCP host like ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT and OpenAI have done something a little bit different and unique specifically to ChatGPT. So they have a version of the MCP UI spec that is specific to ChatGPT. So if you're running into this, I'm going to show you in this video how to actually integrate Tanstack into that, how that ChatGPT app functionality works. And of course, all this code is available to you for free in the link in the description right down below. So let's go take a look at that code right now. All right, over in Cursor, we've got our code up and running on localhost 3000, and that's what we're seeing over in the browser over here. We have no integration currently with ChatGPT. It's just currently in developer mode. You're gonna need that for this. To find that setting, you wanna go to apps and connectors, then down into advanced settings, and finally into developer mode. So what's the first thing we wanna do? Well, actually the first thing we wanna do is get this deployed because in order for ChatGPT to connect to this, it has to be live on the internet. Now you can do that one of two ways. You can do that in development mode using ngrok, which is a tunnel that basically connects a localhost application all the way out to the open internet. But I honestly think it's a little bit easier to use a hosting site. In this case, I'm gonna to use today's sponsor and that's Railway. Railway is a fantastic way to very easily ship your Tanstack applications. So let's go check it out and see what it looks like. I'm gonna log in with GitHub. Now in order to launch my project over here on the open internet, I just need to connect to a GitHub repository. So let's go take our existing app and connect it to this GitHub repo that I've already created. I'll go and add this remote origin to our app. Add everything, commit it. I'll then add the remote origin and then push. All right, let's go take a look. And there it is, all uploaded to GitHub. So let's go over to Railway and then create a new project. I'll use a GitHub repository for that. It's already selected my TS ChatGPT app. Fantastic. All right, a quick issue in my repo, that's on me. Got a quick deployment failure there. I actually got a really nice log message about what that was about. And okay, so what's actually going on here? Well. Uh, this is our pod where our application is going to rest, but you can add into this all kinds of stuff. For example, you can go in and add in a database if you want. Postgres, Redis, MongoDB, MySQL, whatever you want. You can go and add that into your app. You can go and add in any arbitrary Docker image if you want, and you can add as much of this as you want to create the infrastructure that you want for your application. You can have a persistent volume so you can store data. You can create server functions. And then you can wrap that all up as a template. And in fact, you can actually add other people's templates into your own setup. It's a really cool visual way to spec out your architecture. All right, so we went through in our build, actually did it really nice and quickly. Now we can see that we're active. So let's go take a look at it. In order to take a look at it, we actually need to connect it to the outside world. So to do that, I want to generate a domain over here in the settings. And now I'm connected to TS, ChatGPT, app production, up railway app. Let's click on that and ta-da, we are out in the real world. How cool is that? So there are our guitars. This is looking really good. Okay. All right. I'm going to put that side by side with our ChatGPT over here. So this is our production app. And now this is ChatGPT. And what we want to do now is connect those two together. So I need to create an MCP endpoint on that Tanstack app. So to do that, I'm gonna go over into our code and then go into source routes and I'm gonna create a new MCP route. So I wanna have dev up and running and I'm gonna go over here and say mcp.ts. 
And I'm going to bring in first a bunch of imports. We're going to use those as we build out the tools here. But really what we're most interested in is this create file route for this component. So we're going to take out this component here and instead set up server handlers. So this is how you specify a get post type endpoint in tan stack start. So in this case, we're going to say that we have a get handler and that get handler is going to respond by telling us the metadata of the application. This is important for ChatGPT. First thing it's going to do is actually down here call options. So it's actually a cores request. So we need to make sure that that's set. And then after that options has passed the preflight, it's going to call get and that get is going to return the metadata of the application. So in this case, it's a ChatGPT app with a description of MCP server chat integration. Let's just call this a guitar app. And we'll say that it's a guitar e-commerce MCP server. It has both tools and resources, and we'll get there. And then the really important part comes with the post handler. The post handler is what's actually going to handle the incoming MCP request. So we have an MCP request handler. It takes an incoming HTTP request, but it also takes a server that's an MCP server. So now we need to go define what that MCP server is. So to do that, we start off with specifying that MCP server. We'll say that it's good guitar app. And then we'll start off with something really simple. We'll just create a tool that returns the list of all the available guitars. So we'll call it get guitars. It won't take any input parameters and it'll just return all the guitars that we get from our guitar database, which is just simply an array of guitars we have defined over here in data example guitars. All right, that should actually do it. So I'm going to go over here, just do PMPM build to make sure that it's going to build first. And it does. Awesome. And now I'm going to go and add all of that, give it a description of adding an MCP endpoint and push it to production. All right, let's go take a look over at Railway. So now over at Railway, we can see that we have created a deployment just four seconds ago. That's what I just did. Now it's already in the process of building that out. So why did that happen? Well, that happened because we've got a settings over here of an integration with our source repo so that those two are 100% connected. So that when I push to main on the source repo, and that's the branch that we've connected down here. That was by default. And then we automatically build and deploy it. So cool. While we're waiting for that to work, let's take a look at a few more of these options down here. In the build section, you need to find what builder you want to use. We're going to use the default, which is Railpack, and then we're going to use the default build command. So basically, it's all the defaults, which is super easy. It is by default figuring out that we are Vite app and that we have a start command so that it knows that we're a server. It's just super easy to get set up. Of course, during the deploy, you can set your own start command. So in this case, I'm just going to use the default, which is just to run start. You can also set up the resource limits of your CPU, cron jobs, a health check endpoint, enable serverless functions. And you can also configure all of this as code. There's documentation on the format that you use for that. And there we go. We are back into production. Let's go take a look. Deployment was successful. So we deployed in the exact same space. Let's go over here, refresh. That should be good. OK, so now we're going to go and take this application and connect it to our ChatGPT instance. To do that, we go over to Settings, and then back here to Enable Apps and Connectors, then Create. I'm going to call this Guitar Store, then give it that URL, slash MCP. We're not going to use any authentication for this. Of course, you can, but I'm just going to make it simple here and just not use any authentication. Set Create. And now it's going to go off and hit that endpoint. All right, we've connected to Guitar Store in dev mode. That's a good sign. Let's try it out. Let's ask it to recommend a good acoustic guitar from the Get Guitars tool and make sure that we have Guitar Store connected. All right, so it's asking us to call that tool. Awesome. Let's get our guitars and see what it comes back with. All right, I called the tool. There was nothing in the request. That's great. And the response came back with all of our tool data. And so now let's pick the Flowery Love Guitar as one option or the Traveling Man Guitar. That's really good. But as a customer, what I want to see is I actually want to see that guitar and then be able to click on it and go to that guitar page on my Tansac Start application. Let's see if we can make that happen. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is add a tool to show a particular guitar. And that's called the Show Guitar Tool. It takes an ID of the guitar that you want to show. And then we add on this ChatGPT OpenAI specific metadata. And that turns our tool into what OpenAI calls a widget. So that widget has a template. That's the UI widget show guitar.html. We'll get there in just a second. We haven't defined that yet. And then we get some invoking and invoked text. 
And then we get our actual function here that actually does the work. So all we're gonna do is just take this ID, find it in our list of guitars, and then send back just the data about the guitar. So what's gonna happen is OpenAI is actually gonna take this data out of here, it's called tool output, and it's gonna essentially send those as prompts to this UI widget showguitar.html. So what is showguitar.html? Well, let's define that because it's a resource. All right, so here we're defining that resource. The resource is given an ID of a show guitar HTML, and then it's got this widget URI. This is the exact same URI that we defined down here as the output template. So that connects this tool to this template. And then just for test, we got a very simple HTML text in here that just says hello from a guitar app. Hopefully this is gonna work. All right, once again, we have our deployment. And it's off to the races because, again, anytime I push to main on GitHub, it's going to go and do that deployment for us. <sighs> I love that. All right, so we're up and active. And let's go over here to our Tansac start application. Just refresh. Everything looks good. So now let's go back over into our ChatGPT app. I'm going to go get rid of this conversation. Going to go back here, go to settings. And I need to refresh the guitar store because currently it only knows that it has Git guitars. So let's refresh and see what it thinks it has now. This is looking a lot better. Okay, so it's got sh a show guitar widget. It's got the output template. This is good. Got the right domains for CSP. Okay, I, th I, I, I think this might work. Okay, let's go over here and, and then ask for something new. So we'll say exactly the same thing as you did before, go and find it, but then also use the show guitar tool to actually recommend it. Let's try it again. All right, we got the inventory. All right, there you go. You can kind of see it in there. There is a an iframe div saying hello from guitar app. So yes, fantastic. By the way, just, just as an inside baseball kind of thing, this was a huge deal technically. This is actually kind of really hard to get right. The documentation isn't particularly great on it. So if I seem like I'm overly excited about all this just barely working, it's because yeah, this is actually pretty cutting edge stuff and if you try this out for yourself, I think you will find that, you know, it, it, it is a lot of like, oh, I don't know if it's going to work and then it works and then you're excited about it. All right. So now obviously, hello from Guitar App is not what we want. So what we really want is we want a full React application in that iframe. So over here in Source Chat GPT, we basically have exactly that. Let me walk you through. So the easiest thing to start from is this guitar recommendation. It's basically a guitar card that takes the ID and then shows the image as well as a description and the price. And then there's a section at the bottom where you can inject some children, in this case, the view details. But now to run this, we actually need some entry point into our app so that it's a JS module that can be injected into that HTML. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create another entry point for Vite to go and build essentially another React app. And that's called the widget entry over here. So here we have our widget entry. That widget entry just uses the good old React DOM client. Down here in the render function, where it then renders our place guitar recommendation. So what is place guitar recommendation? Well, place guitar recommendation uses this use ChatGPT tool output hook to get the ID from the tool output. And that's defined over here in integration. That integration creates a context that has a tool output in it. It then has a component. That component really just has a use effect that goes and looks to see if that tool output exists on window.openai. So that window.ai is what I would call like a shell integration object. It has all of the information injected into that iframe shell that we're gonna need to know about the tool output that we just got, as well as any functions, for example, like open external that would allow us to open an external URL in the browser. Now we use an interval for that because that tool output doesn't actually exist for a little while. So we just basically ping that and we only then basically unlock this context once we have that tool output. Back over in the widget entry that we then take that tool output and we give it to the guitar recommendation. And then we also put in there a view details button. And when you click on that view details button, we, we then call the open external method on that open AI object. And then we give it the URL where we want the browser externally to open up a new window and go. All right, the one last thing we need to do is create a new Vite config. So we're going to create Vite config widget.ts. 
So this is going to be the Vite config for the Vite process that we use to build out the widget itself, the widget JS and the widget CSS. So we're going to use Tailwind, we're going to use React, and then we're going to specify the entry point that we want. That's that widget entry that I showed you. And then we're also going to specify the output directory. It's going to put it temporarily in widget dist. And then over here in package JSON, and this build widget does the Vite build on that config. Then it takes that output from widget dist, puts it in the public, and there you go, now you're built. So let's go and run this as part of the build. And let's see what happens. So I go over here to pmpm build. Here we go. We see that widget dist was created with those two files. And we should see over in public those two files. There we go, ChatGPT widget and JS. Now all we got to do is go back into our MCP file. We'll bring in the style sheet for the ChatGPT widget CSS. We'll create a div for that Tansac app root. And then we'll source in the ChatGPT widget JS. All right, let's give it a go. Okay, we're pushed and we're off to the races. All right, we've got the inventory. Now we're showing the guitar. And it worked. Holy moly, awesome. Okay, let's click on view details. And we go to the right page. That's so cool. All right, yes. Okay, wow. Yeah, okay. As you can see, this is all kind of tenuous and it's really cutting edge stuff. So sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And yeah, it worked right then. So a huge thanks to my friends over at Railway for both giving financial support for this video. That's wonderful and it's great that they support the channel, but also in making a fantastic service where it makes it just super easy to go and deploy Tansac applications with databases or whatever kind of infrastructure you need, as well as get, get logging on them and all the rest. I'm really excited to hear about some of the new features that they've got in the pipeline. Fantastic stuff. In the meantime, of course, if you have any questions or comments, I'll try and answer them in the comments section right down below. And if you like this video, hit the like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. And you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.